Okay, my name is Comrade Success Jack. I am President, Niger Delta Activist Forum. There is, there is an issue at stake now. Yes. Uh, can you let us in on what is really happening in Niger Delta region? Well, the issue at stake, I must be frank with you, is the fact that on the 2nd of June, the Department of Petroleum Resources came out and they said, uh, they, they put out an advert for the bidding of marginal fields, 57 marginal fields. Those are what you call the oil blocks. And uh, what is actually the problem here is that when you put out such marginal fields, there is no particular consideration for the Niger Delta people. There are host communities where these things are domiciled. What is the, 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 the particular concession given to these host communities? When the acid rains fall, you know in the oil and gas, when they do these exploration and exploitation activities, we have certain consequences on the immediate environment. So you tell all Nigerians to come and bid on the same level playing field, and we say, no, this is not acceptable to us because when the acid rains fall, because of this gas they do and all the associated things that is you know, coming from the oil and gas industry, it causes acid rain. When the acid rain falls, it falls on that immediate environment. It does not fall on the north. It does not fall on the east. It does not fall in the, in the west. It falls on the immediate environment where these activities take place. When the environment is being polluted, you know, owing to rusty pipes or something, equipment failure or something, it doesn't happen to the man in those other places that are not immediate, you know, to the operational activities of these oil and gas companies. So what we are saying is this. We that are host communities, we from the Niger Delta, where these things are being uh, carried out, where the oil is being mined, we need certain concessions. You say 57 oil block. Now, the agitation is simple. We can go this way, say, okay, you can do your oil block uh, bidding processes, but when it comes to marginal fields, why not give marginal fields totally as concession to Niger Delta people? Now, there have been argument that how many Niger Deltans do you have that can... We have industry players that can take on this task and execute very well. i give you an example. Some years ago, Bielsa Oil Company was actually given a mining lease. And they operated the lease, produced over 100,000 barrels. They, they remitted whatever these payments there was to government you, you know, quarters. But at the end of the day, that, that, that oil mining lease was revoked. Why? These are the things that creates, generates bad blood and gives this sentiment that Niger Delta people are, you, you know, uh, are particularly being discriminated against when it comes to oil and gas activity. So what are your demands now? Our demands are simple. People from the Niger Delta should be integrated in the process, not just integration by saying we will give you certain uh, stipends and all of that. We have capable and qualified play, industry players who are able to take on the business of oil block operation. What we are saying is that when you go about these bids, give at least a considerable percentage, let's say 20, 30%. Say this is the exclu exclusively kept aside for Niger Delta people. So that we know, yes, that we have something to look up to. When you do this bid process, you don't just create, uh, say everybody should come flat-footed, level playing field for everybody. When the consequences are dire, the life expectancy owing to this uh, release of methane, when you flare gases, that's methane and some, uh, you, you know, gases being flared into the air. It's reducing the life expectancy in, within the Niger Delta region. And all we are saying is that for all these things we go through, for these things that are being uh, 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 suffered by the host communities and people within those environments, we are saying that we require, we deserve, you know, certain concessions. So what we are asking in earnest is this, is that the bid, the current marginal field bid process should be pl temporarily placed on hold so that you do not, you know, give the idea that some persons are more Nigerians than others or that the Niger Delta people are not being taken into consideration. For instance, this, this, this land where these oil and gas activities take place are actually uh, um, um, lands that were passed to us from our forebears as our own heritage. And we are saying that, look, if we were not, if our forebears did not fight and sit on these lands, if we did not own these lands, probably Nigeria would not have had a claim.
to these oil fields that we are talking about in question. So naturally, you cannot come and license an oil and gas asset that is sitting on my father's backyard, on my own backyard, my own heritage and inheritance, and you tell me that I should not have a role to play. Meanwhile, all the consequences falls on my head. As I speak to you now, you know that in well over 200 and something communities, these issues have been there since 27, 2007, 2010. Issues have been raised about massive air tremors going on within the Niger Delta space. It doesn't happen anyway in, 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 in any other geographical location within the Nigerian context. But it happens in our community. Go through all the 20 communities in Engene land. Go through Okodea, Zarama, APA. Go through all Obolo Nation, all of Obolo Nation, Andoni. Go through all those places where you have massive oil and gas operations going on. You see that periodically these air tremors happen and these are the initial signs of an earthquake. Go there, you will see what we are talking about. And they tell me that nothing is supposed to be considered to me. No, no. It is not right. Now, there are certain limitations. They would now come up and tell you that the Land Use Act, you know, of 1978-79 uh, gives actually uh, land ownership to the federal government. I say this. If laws are being made to oppress the people, or if there is a law in context that does no longer serves the interest of the people, then that law should be, should be abrogated. That law should be done with. Laws should be made to serve the interests of the to integrate the people in the process of governance. If a law makes certain the government activity exclusive and not inclusive, then that law should no longer be in existence. But we have people in the National Assembly. We have people in the executive arm. This is a challenge thrown open, and this matter should not be swept under the carpet. The Niger Delta is actually being threatened with extinction. Because one day we might wake up and see that well over 150 communities have been swallowed up by an earthquake, which is avoidable. And you tell me that even on the brink of such threat, and we live on, on, on those surfaces, and we should not be entitled to any kind of concession. The answer is total no. The answer is total no. Nigeria is for us all. All we are talking about is peace. When there is perfect inclusion in these uh, processes and mechanisms that machinate this award of uh, the, the oil blocks, everybody will feel carried along. Everybody will feel happy. The place will be more peaceful. Let me even tell you, for, for the sake of peace and security, you know there has been complaint about uh, vandalism, oil bunkery vandalism. If this oil and gas asset actually belongs to Niger Delta people, I guarantee you, if your brother owns this, tell me how Niger Delta people will go and bust the pipes to do oil bunkery activities. Tell me how these oil and gas assets will no longer be safe. Check how much the federal government use in mobilizing military security presence to the Niger Delta. Because they are afraid hey, somebody will go and bust the pipe. Hey, somebody is stealing the oil. When it is being owned, reasonable percentage is being owned by the Niger Delta people. The onus and responsibility of protecting what feeds them naturally comes into force and play. So, what we are saying is in the interest of the Nigerian nation, it's not uh, a sectional thing. What we are saying is that we can actually do things better and have better results. But inclusion is the key word here. Okay, finally, what <laughs> We have a profile as Niger Delta Activist Forum where we are people that provide natural, organic, intellectual, and peaceful leadership to Niger Delta people. We are not advocates of uh, violence. Our profile is known. We've not done violence. We are not given to violence. But I bet you, I can assure you, that we'll continue to pile pressure on the system. We'll continue to, we are, we are law-abiding Nigerians. And we should be given, when we make a demand, we should be given such demands, especially when it falls within the ambits of the law and it is actually smacks reasonable logic. Wait, why would we not be given? We have told the Honorable Minister, we wrote a letter to the Honorable Minister of Petroleum Resources, and we attentioned the, the group, the GMD, NMPC. We told them, if our demand is not actually being met, if the process is not being halted, what we'll do is simple. We'll pay a friendly visit. We'll be leading a 500-man delegation, who, which, you know, um, uh, to the Honorable Minister, to go and ask him why, to engage him further. Because they have refused. If you check the guidelines for this oil marginal uh, field uh, bid, actually, there are supposed to be town hall meetings before they actually throw this bid open. 
those were not respected. They went on with business as usual because the, the normal concept is who is there to challenge us. We have been doing it this way. Even though it's against the law, we will continue to do it this way. And nobody will challenge us. And so we are saying we are not challenging anybody, but we are asking questions. People should tell us something. They should tell us something reasonable. We should be included in the process. We cannot continue to be sidelined. There is no Niger Delta. Tell me how many oil blocks are owned by Niger Delta people. Tell me. If they are not proxies and pseudos, tell me. So these are the questions we are asking, begging for answers. Our people, our race, the John Nation, the Niger Delta people are threatened. Our existence is being threatened. But nobody wants to give heed. So this is our simple demand. We will pay a 500-man delegation visit on Thursday, 16th of July, 2020, if they do not halt the process to go and ask questions. Nobody is given to violence, but we need to ask questions as Nigerians. At least we still reserve that right within the context of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. After then, if the dialogue does not go as we want, then we will tell you our... Hello? Yeah. Okay, my name is Success Jack. I'm president of the Niger Delta Activist Forum. Okay. 